I'm asking them to come on our side and use that feverish uh, energy that they have to put boots on the ground and make real change and get Jake, little Jake, who was shot seven times in the back, justice. We're putting half a billion pounds more into these innovative new next generation tests and then rolling them out in a way that helps control uh, the virus. I told my wife, I promised to her that uh, I'll come back. Uh, God gave me again a chance to wear again the uniform. Metallica loves being out of its comfort zone and, and stepping into uh, to new and unexpected challenges. So when this opportunity presented itself again last year, we were ready to jump back in. The protest started after police shot 29-year-old black man Jacob Blake several times in the back during a domestic disturbance on August the 23rd. Well then, three days later, President Trump sent in the National Guard and yesterday he defended that decision by tweeting, if I didn't insist on having the National Guard activate and go into Kenosha, Wisconsin, there would be no Kenosha right now. I will see you on Tuesday. Well, his Democratic challenger, Joe Biden has condemned the shooting and the violence that followed it. He tweeted, burning down communities is not protest, it's needless violence. Violence that endangers lives, violence that guts businesses, that is wrong. This is 28th Street in Kenosha. This actually, Dermot, is the street where Jacob Blake was shot a week ago past Sunday. Donald Trump will not be coming here. Uh, he is due to arrive at a school a few blocks away. But as you can see behind me, it's a bit of a party scene. This is a, a rival event organized by the community here to, to showcase the positive side of Kenosha. Uh, they don't want Donald Trump here. He would not be welcome here. Uh, there has been no attempt to contact the family of Jacob Blake, according to family members, uh, even though Donald Trump said that he tried to negotiate a path to the family via uh, their pastor. I'm joined by Justin Blake. He's the uncle of Jacob Blake. Many thanks for your time, Mr. Blake. How are you doing? Thank you, sir. Um, very well. Uh, tell me this. Donald Trump is in town. Correct. He says that he comes with a positive message because had he not done what he did, there would be no Kenosha because of the violence. What do you say to that? That's a misnomer. The fact of the matter is, we talked to the uh, African descendants in uh, Kenosha. We sat down with the organizations here. We led a protest last Saturday of almost 8,000 people, and we changed their minds and their spirit and their soul. What they're doing, anybody could understand. We've been walked over, dogged out for 300 years. We built this country. So I can understand why they would want to burn something. But I'm asking them to come on our side and use that feverish uh, energy that they have to put boots on the ground and make real change and get Jake, little Jake, who was shot seven times in the back, justice. Tell me this, how is Jacob Blake, your, your nephew? Nephew's doing great. He's hanging in there. He's paralyzed. How would anybody wake up and do this paralyzed? But I'm here to tell you, he's resilient. He's a Blake warrior. His, great, his grandfather, my father, is looking down, shining on him right now. He marched three times with King. We've been fighting the same battle over and over since my father marched three times with King. We're going to get it straight in 2020, starting right here in Kenosha. Tell me this. Why do you think Donald Trump has come here, and what would you say to him? It's a free country. Obviously, you can go anywhere. Who wouldn't want to be around Kenosha and these great people? But the fact of the matter is, don't take focus away from the real story. The real story is, uh, I don't even want to say a road cop. A cop went out of his position and shot our nephew seven times, and we want justice. He's not here to, to uh, console the families. He's here to uh, give comfort to the militia. Make a young killer a hero, 70 year old child. Uh, he should be the father of the country. He's, he's operating at a very low, low moral level. Working well. That is the Health Secretary's assessment of the government's coronavirus testing regime, despite some people being directed to travel to test centres 100 miles away. I began by asking Mr Hancock about the £500 million investment being announced today to ramp up testing capacity. Being able to expand mass testing with these new technologies 
it is a, a huge positive step forward in our battle against the virus. If you think about it, a combination of everybody doing social distancing and then testing to find out where the virus is, is our best way of avoiding having to do uh, local lockdowns and our best way of keeping the virus under control. So, you know, at the moment, if you take a test, the swab goes in your throat, it has to go off to the lab, we get most of them back the next day, but changing that to something where you can just ha have some saliva and 20 minutes later you've got the result, that means we can have many, many more people tested and also you can just get the result fast and know that you are COVID safe. And how do we access those tests? Well, we're dealing with about 100 different testing companies at the moment who are, have got new innovative technologies. Uh, and when those tests work, we're always putting them through rigorous trials because obviously uh, the tests have to work. Um, we're then rolling them out. And that's one of the things that we're announcing today, putting half a billion pounds more into these innovative new next generation tests and then rolling them out in a way that helps control uh, the virus. So for instance in Salford in Greater Manchester um, we're, we're taking the testing right into the centre of town so that everybody can de get a test and we can find out uh, anybody who is asymptomatic, doesn't have symptoms uh, but has coronavirus. And likewise you can then start to think about how you can use this for much more uh, ways of opening things up and, and getting life uh, back to normal because people will be able to know quickly uh, whether or not they've got coronavirus and therefore have the confidence knowing that they don't have it if they get a negative test uh, to, to, um, uh, to, to go about more normal life. Something that you will know about and I'm sure you will want to comment on is Tony Abbott. I can see that you're wearing your NHS Pride badge. Uh, I wear mine with pride is what you've tweeted previously. Tony Abbott, who was the former Prime Minister of Australia, so I'm suggesting that he may well be potentially a US, uh, UK trade ambassador. He says he feels threatened by homosexuality. He also says elderly people should have been left to die naturally from COVID and men are better set to exercise authority than women. Is he the right sort of person to represent us? Well, uh, as far as I understand it, the proposal is that um, uh, Mr Abbott supports the UK on trade policy, which is an area in which he's got a huge amount of expertise. You know, I, I bow to nobody in my uh, support for everybody to, uh, to, to love who they love, uh, whoever that is. And, and, um, uh, 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 and, and uh, well, as, as, as you know, and as we've talked about uh, a lot, but I think, you know, we, want, we need to have the best experts in the world in their, working in their field. Um, and as the former Prime Minister of Australia, obviously Mr Abbott has got a huge amount of experience. Even if he's a homophobic misogynist? Well, I, I'm, I, I think that that is... Uh, I, I don't think that's uh, true. Uh, I, don't, I haven't I've seen I've just told you what he said. He, I'm sure you don't support some of his comments. He's a homophobe and he's a misogynist. Well, uh, he's also an expert in uh, trade. So one plays off against the other? Really? Is that really what you're saying, Health Secretary? Come on. Well, no, what I'm saying is that we need experts in uh, different areas uh, and um, somebody who's the former Prime Minister of Australia uh, is uh, obviously an enormous expert in the, uh, in the field of, of trade. It doesn't change my views. This is where it all began, and you would hardly know. Life in Wuhan is back to normal. It's people apparently carefree. The city is unrecognizable from January, when it was in the grip of a mystery disease, one that didn't yet have a name. Sky News was among the thousands caught in the chaos and confusion of the first ever lockdown, which prompted a mass evacuation. Seven months later, though, there are still questions. How did Wuhan become ground zero for the coronavirus? What did the Communist Party know and when? In China, those questions are asked only by the very brave. I
为他们做的事情付出他们的应有的代价。Jia Lei's father fell ill at the end of January. There was no ambulance to take him to hospital, so his family set out to walk the six miles in the freezing cold before they were picked up in a local's tuk-tuk. It was too late. He died of respiratory failure as he sat in the emergency waiting room. Thousands here are grieving, but few would dare what Zhao Lei did next. She's suing the local government for compensation and for a public apology, fighting for what she believes is fair against a system that does not tolerate dissent. My father is a very old man. He doesn't have a lot of words, but he's very good. He's a man who's 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 a man. 不会被见那种人，然后给我吃了一个年饭以后，封完城以后，就人就突然就不行了。我们我觉得这个事是我没有办法接受。我觉得一个人不可能这样子，好好生生的就是突然就没了。我觉得我不能接受这个事实。那讨一个公平公正的一个说法，我不希望我父亲就这样不明不白的死了。<音>这是快要两个月，自从阿列克谢耶夫斯基坠入了危险的飞机上，在早晨起飞从西伯利亚。这是他的惨痛的哭泣，在他失去意识之前，被美国军方认为是高血压。现在，这个预警的消息从德国国防部发出。阿列克谢耶夫斯基是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的是被击毙的
Now Sky News has been inside Norfolk Park, one of the country's worst hit hospitals and the first to declare a critical incident back in March after running out of intensive care beds. Our people and politics correspondent Nick Martin has met staff who have been doing their best to prepare for a possible second wave this winter. Northwick Park Hospital in London has one of the highest COVID death rates in the country. The very first of thousands of cases came through the door in the early evening of the 4th of March this year. It felt like a one-off um, and then within two weeks we, we were seeing 20 to 30 a day and we doubled we were doubling at a rate of about every two to three days and um, within four weeks we were seeing uh, 80 to 100 cases a day, very, very sick people came in very, very quickly. Franco Paolo is a charge nurse at Northwick Park. He developed COVID symptoms in mid-April. I have fever and shortness of breathing, so we went to the hospital. My symptoms is getting worse. I was uh, in the back seat of the, of the car. My lips are getting blue. It's really trying to strangle you. At the hospital, staff realise the patient is actually a friend and colleague. I can see their worry in their face, their sadness. I can see some of them crying also. And when Franco doesn't respond to treatment, the decision is made to put him on a ventilator. I told the, the consultant, let me have a, a, a quick word with my wife, with Grace. I told my wife, I promised to her that uh, I'll come back. After five weeks in a coma, Franco beat the virus and pulled through. I'm happy that uh, God gave me again a chance to wear again the uniform and uh, to help out the people. Metallica, they have another side to them, I'm told. And a new documentary has been made about their work with the San Francisco Symphony. It airs on Sky Arts on Saturday at 9pm. Do you want to have a listen? All right, then. Lars Ulrich, drummer and co-founder of Metallica, is joining us now. Hello to you. It's good to see you. Welcome to the programme. Good morning. Good, good morning, morning from San Francisco. You. How amazing. I would not have immediately put a band like Metallica with the San Francisco Symphony Orchestra. How did that come about in the first place? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It actually came about in the first place uh, 20 years ago when we did this uh, in 1999, uh, we were much younger then. The orchestra, orchestra was skewing much older, and a gentleman named Michael Kamen uh, brought uh, the two of us together. Uh, 20 years later, there is a new arena in San Francisco uh, opening last year, the Chase Center. Uh, San Francisco finally gets a world-class arena, and they ask if Metallica will be the first band, the first event, actually, uh, to celebrate uh, the, the opening. And uh, so we're thinking it's 20 years since the first go around with the San Francisco Symphony. Let's make this a celebration for the city of San Francisco, for the Bay Area, for Northern California. So we asked if they would collaborate with us once again. They said yes. We did the concerts. We had a great weekend. The arena got opened. Everybody was very happy. The cameras were rolling. The tape recorders were recording. And now we finally 11 months later, have the album out. It was supposed to come out three, four months. The album and the movie was supposed to come out three, four months ago, but because of COVID and the challenges uh, in the wake of that. Uh, but now it's finally here. So we're uh, very happy about that. Forgive me, Lars, but I mean, is it reasonable to say that your music and the symphony orchestra are potentially very different types of music? How does that meld together? Uh, I think that's, uh, that's reasonable to say. Uh, but Metallic has always uh, loved challenges and we have always uh, been open to all kinds of cool and crazy collaborations. So when Michael came and brought this to us in about 97, 96, 97, we were totally game. It took him about two years to write the uh, arrangements, the orchestral arrangements. We finally did this then for the first time in 99. 
We played the couple of shows in San Francisco. We played in Berlin. We played in New York. It was a great project and we love Metallica loves being out of its comfort zone and, and stepping into uh, two new and unexpected challenges. So when this opportunity presented itself again last year, we were ready to jump back in. How different is it this time to try to get to the top of the charts? Well, when you've been around as long as we have, uh, we're, we're, we're closer to 40 years and 30 years. Uh, we'll take a number one, obviously. It's not the reason we get out of bed and it's not the reason we do these projects, but it's always much appreciated. And if, if, if anything, it's about the fans and about the Metallica family and how they make this happen. Uh, obviously, it, uh, and a surreal time the last six months. Uh, like I said before, we were hoping to get this record out in the spring. Uh, it's finally here. Uh, I, I would say for me, the most important thing is that the fans are really uh, embracing this record. The reception has been incredible. I would say even better than the first SNM album uh, 20 years ago. So that's the most important part. But I will definitely take a number one uh, in England. Uh, these, things, these things don't come around all that often.